what is it about the Christian faith that, that is distinctive? Uh, if you speak with a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Confucianist, uh, they will in all likelihood say there are things about the Christian faith that are distinctive, that are um, unusual, that you don't find in Hinduism, for example. What are those things? Some years ago, I read a book by Hans Kuhn. who is a Swiss uh, theologian, and uh, he says that it's a good thing to ask as we interact with other religions, for Christians to ask as they interact with other religions, what, as you look at the Christian faith, what do you see as being uh, distinctive, or what is the gift that the Christian faith has to offer? Just to ask that question, it's a good thing to do that. And I took that advice rather seriously. I travel a lot. I, last year I was in 15 countries, and I meet with many different expressions of the Christian faith, and uh, oftentimes with people who are recently Christian. And I ask that question over and over again. What do you find in the Christian faith which is distinctive? Why have you become a Christian? What is it about the Christian faith that you have found important or attractive? What is the what is the narrative that, uh, that you have found important? It'd be an interesting question to ask Wakuru and uh, Nyakitumu that we talked about in our last session. What did they find in the Christian faith which was so important that they were ready to move against uh, many of their tribal practices and even challenge the authority of their parents in matters like marriage? What was it that they found in Jesus, that they found in the Christian faith that led them to go to all those risks and challenges uh, and difficulties and persecution for, for Wakudu. What did they find in the Christian faith that was important? So I'm going to just linger with that question now for the next several sessions, looking at answers that I get to that question in my travels. And first of all is the Bible. Uh, this most obvious response is the Bible. Uh, there is nothing like the Bible. Uh, around anywhere. Um, some years ago when I lived in Somalia, a uh, student, I think his name was Ibrahim as I recall, uh, came to my office at night and he asked me if I could please give him a Bible. And so he signed a statement saying that he asked for this voluntarily. We were not to distribute scriptures, but when it was requested, we did. We gave, we gave scriptures to people who asked for them. And he thanked me very, very much. He went out into the night. The next night he returned and he had the Bible in his hand that I had given him. In fact, it was wrapped up in some paper. And he put it on my desk and he said, I thought the Bible is scripture. It's not scripture. It is a history book. He said, last night I read the book of Genesis. And I read the story of Abraham and Lot. I read the account of Abraham's sons, Ishmael and Isaac. I read the story of Jacob and Esau. I read history last night. So that can't be scripture. The Koran is not history. The Koran is instruction on what you should believe and what you should do. So as a Muslim who is used to the Koran, this Bible that is primarily a history book made no sense at all. How can you call this scripture, you see? That's the first distinctive I hear as people talk about the Christian faith, the nature of the Bible, which is predominantly a history book, historical narrative, uh, beginning with the account of Adam and Eve in the garden. And you walk through the Bible, page after page, chapter after chapter, book after book, very much of it is historical narrative. It's distinctive. No other scripture is like that. The Quran, as I said, is instruction. The uh, Hindu scriptures are philosophical. Uh, the Sikh scriptures are, are uh, meditation. But here is the Bible, a historical narrative of God calling forth a people and leading them onward and attempting to form them into his people 
and uh, guiding them on the way. And sometimes they fall and fail, and sometimes they get up again and continue to follow God. Sometimes they ignore God. Sometimes they say yes to God. The whole historical drama, you know, right through the Bible, page after page, chapter after chapter, this historical narrative with instruction on how we should respond to the narrative. That's the nature of the Bible. So the Bible is distinctive scripture. It's one of the key reasons why people become Christian. That's what I hear them say all over the world in my travels. It's the Bible, the Bible. It's amazing. Uh, an acquaintance of mine, uh, uh, Leslie Newbigin, who spent some 40 years in India, is now in heaven, he died several years ago. Uh, he would say sometimes that when he arrived in India, he, uh, as a young missionary, many, many years ago, he met an Indian uh, uh, Swami, a very wise Brahman priest. And this Brahman priest said, you Christians have done a tremendous disservice to India. You came here announcing that you are bringing a new religion. The Christian faith is not a religion, he said. India is full of religion. It has too much religion. So you just said you're bringing even another one now. That, that is not true. He said, as I read the Bible, it is not a religion. It is rather a historical narrative which reveals the meaning of life and human destiny. That's not religious stuff as Hindus think of it, it is rather a unique and completely revolutionary way of looking at history and the meaning of history and our place in history. You should have introduced the Christian faith as a historical narrative, a story of human destiny, a story of human history and the meaning of it all. That's what the Bible is all about. It's not about religion. First of all is the Bible, and secondly, as people look at the Christian faith, is exactly what the Hindu Brahman said, that the Bible is unique also in this, that it is not the introduction of another, yet another religion. It is rather very critical of religions, I would say. The Bible is a revelation concerning the meaning of history and our destiny and God's grand plan for us. That's, and so, so the Bible is generally, is very critical of religion and certainly asserts very emphatically that religion does not lead us to God. It's God who leads us to God. Uh, it is God coming down to reveal himself to us. It's not our religious enterprise that somehow opens our minds to the truth. The Bible is extremely skeptical about, about religion. Um, it, it reminds me of some years ago I was in a um, in a, very, uh, in a very devoutly Muslim country. And um, uh, it was during Ramadan, and my, these dear Muslims who were inviting me into their home, they asked me, uh, are you fasting during Ramadan? I said, actually, I'm not. And then they wondered, am, am I praying five times a day? I said, actually, I pray constantly. I live in prayers, I walk through the day, but I'm not doing five, five prayers a day facing a, a Mecca or anywhere else. I'm not, I'm not involved in that kind of religious ritual day by day. Uh, and then they said, well, wh why not? I said, well, you know, the Christian faith, Christ in the Christian faith, frees us from religious ritual. He frees us from the burden of, of what you might say, religion, leading us rather into a right and joyous relationship with God and with one another. And surely we worship God, we're committed to all of that. Uh, but it's hard to put that in sort of categories of religious ritual, practice, and so forth. Wow, they said, that is very, very freeing. Uh, would you be able to find a Bible for us? <laughs> His family said, we'd like to learn something about this walk with God which frees you from the burden of religious ritual. So that's another aspect of the Christian faith. Uh, it's not, uh, the Bible is not impressed with religious ritual. It, it seeks to free us from that sort of thing so that we might really know God in a personal way. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. 
Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.